Hi, in this tutorial, we are looking at uh, uh, MSI components, okay? And uh, MSI components basically refers to medium scale integration components, okay? Which are things like your comparators, uh, decoders, uh, multiplexers, and so on. Okay, so in the first question here, we are told that the Boolean function KABC is implemented using a magnitude comparator, okay? And we are asked to write the function k in some in the sum of mean terms, okay, using the uh, notation here. Okay, so basically, if you look at uh, the way it's connected, you can see that basically there are two inputs here, x, okay, uh, and y. Okay, and x is represented, uh, the four bit inputs are a, b, c, and zero okay where else for y it is zero d c and b okay so what we need to do is to analyze the situation uh, whenever x is lesser than y okay now let's look at uh, look back at how a magnitude comparator works a magnitude comparator works uh, basically by checking bit by bit starting from the most significant bit okay so if the most significant bit itself there is a difference then we automatically know which number is bigger or which number is smaller correct okay only if the most significant bits are the same then we go on to the next two bits and the next two bits and so on okay so we start with the most significant bit first so in order for uh, x okay to be lesser than y so what we want is x to be lesser than y so in order for x to be lesser than y Okay, uh, since the most significant bit of y is already zero, okay, it automatically puts a constraint that a cannot be one, a has to be zero. Okay, so that is the first thing that we can observe. Okay, if the most significant bit of y is zero, it already puts a constraint on the most significant bit of x that it also has to be zero. Okay, in order for me to fulfill this condition that x is to be lesser than y. Now let's look at the next bit. So now that the most significant bits are the same, we can look at the next bit. And for the next bit, <coughs> if uh, for x to be lesser than y, one possible combination is b is 0 and d is 1. Okay, so I'll maybe use the green color here. b is 0 and d is 1. Okay, so if this bit, uh, the second bit is uh, x is already lesser than y automatically this condition will be fulfilled okay so how about the other bit so for this situation since b is 0 here b will also be 0 over here this last bit will also be 0 okay and c can be either 0 or 1 okay so in this case we can say that c is either 0 okay or 1 okay it makes no difference because this uh, bit position here already we can see a difference between the B and D Okay, so that is one possible uh, Combination where X is lesser than Y now. Let's look at another combination. So another combination again the most significant bit here is 0 uh, So a must be 0 Okay, so what if the next bits are the same so B here is also 0 Okay, oh, sorry uh, we already did that just now. So here is 1 and here is 1. So if these two bits are the same, okay, then we can go on to the next two bits. Correct? So the next two bits uh, basically are C and B. Since B is a 1 here, there's also a 1 here. Correct? And since this last bit is a 0, this bit here is a 0. Okay? So what do you see here? You see that in this uh, combination, Okay, uh, C and C are the same. So for X, the least significant bit over here is 0, whereas here the bit here is 1. So as long as these two bits are the same, C and C are the same, X is always going to be 1 lesser than Y. Okay, so over here, again, C can be 0 and 0 or 1 and 1. Okay, so in both these situations, x is going to be lesser than y by 1. Okay, 
So now that we have all of this, we put it in the order of A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Okay, what do you get? Okay, so for this first uh, entry over here, A is 0, B is 0, D is 1, okay, and C is either 0 or 1, correct? So it's either 0 or it's 1. So the other combination is this. Okay, so this will be 1, 3. Okay, now let's look at this combination here. So in this A is 0, okay, B is 1, D is 1, and C is again 0 or 1. So 0, 1, 1, 1, which implies 5 and 7. So the final answer for K okay, is the mean term combination of 1, 3, 5, and 7. Okay, so I hope uh, that uh, gives you a clear explanation on how we can um, uh, analyze such uh, questions. Okay, so as long as you understand how the magnitude comparator works, that it starts from the most significant bit down, then uh, we will understand how uh, to analyze such questions. Okay, now let's go on to uh, question two. Okay, in question two, basically you are given a multiplexer, four to one multiplexer using the first two input variables as the selector input. Okay, now for this question, uh, it's basically a standard approach. Okay, uh, first thing you must understand is okay. Let's let's look at what we are given first. This is a three bit input. Okay, so rightfully, if I'm given a eight to one multiplexer where I'm able to have three selectors P, Q, and R. Okay, and zero, one, two, three, five, six, seven. Okay, if I'm given a uh, 8 to 1 multiplexer, then all I need to do is connect up the inputs which are uh, have the mean term expression to a 1. So this will be a 1, this will be a 1, this will be a 1, this will be a 1. And this is automatically by F1. Okay, the rest of them will be zeros. Okay. Hmm. okay. So that is uh, basically how you can do it if you are given a 8 to 1 multiplexer. Okay, but in our question, we are given a uh, 4 to 1 multiplexer. So, uh, what we need to do is use the first two input variables. So, P and Q will be used as the input variables, okay, as the selector inputs. And what we then need to do is to use uh, represent R, okay, uh, as part of our input to the multiplexer. Okay, and the approach is uh, standard. What you do is you write out the truth table. And in, after you write out the truth table, you group them in pairs. Okay. The reason why you group them in pairs is in each pair, you can see that the first two bits will always be consistent. Okay, in each group. So this is 0, 0. This is 0, 1. This is 1, 0. And this is 1, 1. Okay. And then what you do is you... Look at how the output value is either constant or is related to the third variable here. Okay, and based on that, you come up with a new relationship for the output. So if I look at the first two lines, you can see that when P and Q are both 0, 0, 0, regardless of the R value, the output is always 0. Okay, so for these two uh, uh, lines, I can say that the output here is 0. Okay, now when the PQ is 0, 1, you can see that the output okay, uh, follows R. So when R is 0, output is 0, R is 1, output is 1. So in this case, the output is actually R. Okay, in the case when PQ is 1, 0, you can see that the relationship between the output and R is their complements. Okay, so the output here is R bar. And for the last uh, two lines, you can see the output is always 1. Okay, so once you get this idea, you just have to then draw your multiplexer. 
Okay, so in your multiplexer, you have the two selector inputs, P and Q, which are to S1 and S0. And you have uh, four lines here, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. And the first, when P, Q are 0, 0, the first line will go through, and that means your output is always going to be uh, 0. When it is 0, 1, which is this combination here, your output is R. When it's 1, 0, it is R bar. And when it's 1, 1, it is 1. Okay, so that is your output here, which is your F1. Okay, so this is a standard approach uh, that we take okay, to um, solve such uh, min term or maximum expressions using a uh, multiplexer. Okay, for question 2b, uh, basically what you're given is a max term expression. So for a max term expression, uh, what we know is the numbers given here, 1, 5, 6, basically uh, point to those entries uh, where the output is going to be a 0. Okay, And then you have another D for this stands for a don't care condition. So uh, X, Y, Z combination 4, which is 1, 0, 0, the output here is a don't care. Okay, so that is how you interpret this. Now, uh, basically, the steps involved are the same once you have this uh, truth table. Okay, the only difference between the earlier question and this question was that was a mean term expression. This is a max term expression. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to group them uh, in twos. Uh, okay, and basically what we're going to do after that is we're going to see the relationship between the output and the third uh, variable, in this case, which is Z, and see if there's any relationship we can establish. So for the first uh, group, okay, we can see that the output here, F2, is the complement of Z. So this is basically your Z bar. Okay. Uh, for the next group, uh, 0, 1, we can see that the output is always a 1. Okay. Uh, for the third group here, uh, basically what we have now is a don't care condition for one of the outputs. So what we can do is, it's up to us to interpret it in whichever way we like. Okay, so the easier way is, since the other out output is 0 in this group, we can take the don't care to also represent 0. Okay, so in that case, then the output is always 0 regardless of Z. Okay, and in the third uh, entry over here, we can see that the output uh, follows Z exactly. Okay, so once you have this, basically the last step is to again draw the uh, multiplexer with the input so we have two inputs uh, x and y to s1 and s0 and the uh, three or uh, four inputs to the multiplexers are here so the first one when x y is 0 0 it is basically z bar the next one 0 1 it is a 1 uh, 1 0 is a 0 and the last one is a Z. Okay, so this gives us our output which is F2 here. Okay, so that uh, I hope gives you a good idea on how we can use the max term approach uh, to solve this. So means min term and max term is actually the same. Uh, only thing uh, here we have a don't care condition. So for don't care condition, we just interpret it uh, in a way that uh, makes things easier for us. Okay, so that is your part B. Okay, so for part C, okay, uh, what you're given is, uh, you're given this expression here. Um, so this is also effectively a max term expression because this is a product of sums. And what you need to do is you need to fill up the truth table, correct? So to fill up the truth table, you need to have all three literals, uh, A, B, and C, okay, for each of the max term components here. Okay, so how do you uh, interpret this uh, to get the third unknown uh, literal to in order to fill up this uh, truth table? Okay, the way to look at it is uh, simple. So if I look at this first uh, component here, uh, so this is the max term expression uh, in terms of A, B, and C. Okay, I can say that for this uh, term here, B bar represents a 1. A is a 0. 
Okay, so you have to remember in a max term is always the complement. So the the variable with the bar is actually a one. The one without the bar is a zero. But there is no c over here, which means c has been. Uh, so you can think that c has been sort of factored out of this expression. So c is uh, can take on a value of either zero or one. Okay, so we put a x here. Okay. Uh, similarly over here for this uh, a b c. Okay, so for this expression here. We can say that B is again 1, and C is 0, and A is X. Okay, so what does, uh, what is the next step? Basically, we replace X with the possible combination. So we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And here is uh, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 0. Okay, so the four uh, possible combinations here are 2, okay, uh, 3, here is also another 2. And here is 6. Okay, so basically, uh, what we can say is this is actually equivalent to writing it as a max term expression of 2, 3, and 6. Okay, and uh, once you have that in terms of translating it to the truth table, we know that entries 2, 3, and 6 are the ones where the output is a 0, the rest of them, the output is a 1. Okay. Um, so basically, once you have your truth table, uh, it is the same process as before. We put them in groups of two, okay, and we do the same analysis. Okay, so the same analysis, and we see the relationship. So for the first group here, we can see the output here is always a one. For the second group here, we see that the output is always a zero. Okay, for the third group, okay. We see the output is always a one, and for the last group, we can see that the output follows C. Okay, so in terms of your actual implementation, what you have here is your A uh, and B over here. This is your S one, S zero. Okay, so we have zero, one, two, three. Okay, so for zero, zero, it is. Uh, so this is a 1, this is a 0, this is a 1, and this is C. Okay, this is your F3 output. Okay, so you can see that the approach is the same. Okay, as long as you are able to translate the information to a truth table, then the steps are always the same. Huh? Group them into pair by pair, and then you analyze from that. Okay, so the question also asked us to uh, consider this, where... What if we use the last two input variables? So when we have three input variables, A, B, and C, all the while we were using A and B. Now we are saying, why don't you use B and C? Okay, as a selector input. So if I were to draw uh, the uh, multiplexer here, basically what I'll have is B and C come here. Okay, so in order for me to do it this way, uh, I mean, you, you may have your own method. I would say the safest way to approach this is look at it uh, uh, or redraw the truth table, okay, and put B and C in front followed by A, okay. So what you now need to do is to transfer the information from this original table into this new table where the inputs are rearranged, okay. So you can see that, uh, for example, this 0, 0, 0 is, we have to look at B first, B, C, and then A. So 0, 0, 0. So the output here is a 1. Okay. Uh, this 0, 0, 1 is actually referring to this combination here, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So the output here is a 1. Okay. So similarly, you need to go through the entire table. Okay, so for example here, 0, 1, 0 is uh, 0, 1, and 0. So output here is a 1. Okay, and the same next one, 0, 1, 1 is uh, 0, 1, and 1, which is a 1 here. Okay, so if you go through the full truth table, you will get uh, the values that you need. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to put them here. And once you get the values, then you uh, do the same thing again. Okay, so you group them in twos. 
and then you see the relationship okay so for the first one you can see the output is always a one okay for this you see the output is always a one here the output is always a zero and for the last one the output follows a okay the output here follows a okay so now what you need to do is to translate this back here zero one two three Okay, so what you have here is uh, 1, 1, 0, 8. And this is your F3. So it's the same as the earlier F3 in terms of logic. Okay, only thing is, in the first part, we used A and B as the selector inputs. Here, we're using B and C as the selector inputs. Okay, but the technique uh, and approach towards this is exactly the same. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the next question here. Question 3. Okay, for this question, basically what we are doing is analyzing uh, how uh, the input variables are propagated through a first stage decoder followed by a multiplexer and eventually uh, they are all together. Okay, so the first thing we, we can note is both the decoders here are enabled. Okay, that means they are functioning all the time. Okay, so for a decoder, we know that the output is actually a mean term combination of its inputs. Okay, so the outputs here are basically 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, which translates to A bar, B bar here. Okay, A bar, B here, A, B bar here, and A, B over here. Okay, so that is the first stage. For the second stage multiplexer, we can say that, or we can see that, uh, when C is a 0, whatever is on input 0 will be passed through, okay? So, when C is 0, okay, so what I have is uh, A bar and B bar will pass through when C is 0. The other possibility is when C is 1, A bar, B will pass through. So, A bar, B will pass through when C is 1. Okay, uh, what we observe is that D is not part of this, okay? So, it... The actual boolean function has four inputs a b c d but d is not part of this that means d is in fact a don't care condition here okay so regardless of d as long as either one of these inputs are present f will be activated so d is in essence a don't care over here okay so in terms of uh, the numbers uh, that they represent you can write them as 0 0 0 x here and 0 1 1 x okay so that uh, translates to um, 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 and 0 1 1 1 okay so the numbers are 0 1 6 and 7 okay and we repeat the same process for the other multiplexer over here so we can see that uh, when C is 0, A, B bar will go through. So, A, B bar will go through when C is 0. And the other combination is uh, A, B will go through when C is 1. Okay. So, similarly, D is a don't care condition. So, in terms of the numbers, I have 1, 0, 0, X and 1, 1, 1, X. Okay. So, uh, putting uh, replacing x with the values here 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 here is 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 so the numbers are 8 9 14 and 15 okay and we do the same thing for the lower half here so for the lower half basically again the same thing the decoder is providing a mean term combination of the inputs to the output so what you have here is b bar c bar okay zero zero then b bar c zero one b c bar one zero and b c okay so over here basically what you have is uh, if d is zero b bar c bar will go through okay so b bar c bar will go through if d is zero or the other combination is uh, B bar C will go through 
if D is 1. Okay, and in this case, your <coughs> A is a don't care condition here. Okay, so the numbers wise is X, 0, 0, 0, or X, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so they are 0, 0, 0, 0, or 1, 0, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 1, 1, or 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so they are, in terms of actual numbers, they are 0, 8, 3, and 11. Okay, and for the last stage here, this is the same thing. B, C bar will go through when D is 0. So, B, C bar, and D bar. Or with B, C will go through when D is 1. Okay, so X is, sorry, A is a don't care condition. So what you have is X, 1, 0, 0, or X, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so they are 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, or 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which are 4, 12, 7, and 15. Okay, so of course you see some uh, duplicate uh, numbers, okay. Uh, so the final uh, expression, okay, taking all these numbers into account is a, a, a very long list. F of A, B, C, and D is a long list. Uh, and the long list is basically 0, 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 14, and 15. So that is your final answer. Okay, so basically this question is based trying to... Uh, reinforce the way we understand uh, decoders and multiplexers okay so as long as you understand that and you understand how to apply the don't care uh, variables inside the expression then you'll be able to solve this okay so that is your question three okay so for question four um, so question four is a, a question that is a bit tricky uh, and it is something that is not very uh, obvious okay in terms of how you can approach it and how you can solve it okay uh, basically you have an input okay a four bit input a b c d and you have a three bit output and uh, generally what you are asked to do in such situation is to find a relationship between the input and the output okay and of course in at first glance you Will not be able to see any particular relationship okay because nothing is, is so clear okay so that is uh, where the components that are given okay these components that are given play a part okay why because that is itself a hint on how you should be thinking towards solving this problem okay uh, so you can see that we are given two counting devices to count zeros and to count ones okay so that itself gives you a hint on how we should approach this question that means we should look at the relationship between the input and output in terms of the number of ones or the number of zeros okay so that is how uh, we should approach this uh, question okay so let's look uh, at it and after some analysis okay you can see that uh, in the situation when A is 1, okay, the output here is actually the number of 1s. Okay, so if you look at it, you have 1, 1 here, the number here is 1. You have 2, 1s here, the number here is 2. You have 3, 1s here, the number here is 3. The num 4, 1s here, the number here is 4. Okay, so from this, what you can conclude is, if a is equals to 1 and the output is number of 1s. Okay, so that is the uh, one thing that you can sort of analyze and you can see. Now, the next thing is when a is 0. Okay, when a is 0, what do you observe? Okay, so let's look at the numbers. Okay, in terms of the number of zeros. So here... Uh, in this entry, I have 1, 0, okay, and the number here that I see is 5. Here, I have two zeros, the number here is 6. Here, I have three zeros, the number here is 7. Okay, here I have 
four zeros, the number here is actually eight, but eight is one zero zero zero, so you don't see the most significant bit. Okay, so the relationship that you can see here is if a is zero, output is number of zeros plus four. Okay, so that is one relationship you can see. The other uh, possible relationship is you can also observe that uh, over here, okay, uh, you can also observe that if a is 0, the output is number of 1s plus 2 times the number of zeros. Okay, uh, how do I uh, arrive at that? You can see that uh, in this line over here, how many 1s do I have? I have 3 1s. Okay, and how many zeros do I have? Two. Uh, sorry, one zero here. So three plus uh, two, I get a value of five, which is this. Okay, and over here, what do I have? I have two ones. Two ones plus two times the number of zeros. So I have two zeros. Two times two, I have four. So six. Here I have how many ones? I have one one plus three zeros. So the number of zeros times two. So plus six. So I get seven. Here I have zero plus two times four, which is eight. Okay, so that is another relationship that you can also observe. Okay, so either I can say that if a is zero, output is number of zeros plus four, a is zero. Or the other alternative is if a is 0, output is the number of 1s plus 2 times the number of zeros. Okay, so I understand that this is definitely not uh, obvious and not uh, very clear in the approach. Okay, because if you are unable to see a pattern or any relationship, you really do not know how to start a question like this. Okay, so my advice to you in the exam is if you see some question like this, Okay, where you are supposed to solve it using uh, a way of uh, using some hardware approach. Okay, and you have no idea how to start. Okay, uh, don't waste too much time. Okay, uh, if you are able to see some direction, some idea you have, then go ahead and start. Okay, but if you really have no idea, then don't spend too much time. Uh, leave this question, go on to other questions. And later you come back to this okay because you can spend a lot of time staring at the table and still not be able to figure out any relationship okay so my advice is during the exam if you are able to see something you can figure out some starting point go ahead if not uh, skip the question first do other questions and come back to this later okay that is my advice to you okay so now coming back to this question we already have this relationship so how do we go about uh, doing it so we know that the input here is uh, a b c d okay so this a b c d we can connect to a count uh, zero okay and we can also connect it to a count one okay so for the uh, counting devices we have uh, two four bit inputs here Okay, and basically they are both connected uh, exactly the same way. Okay, and basically uh, once you connect them here, uh, on the output side what you have is you have a 3-bit output C2, C1, C0, C2, C1, C0. Okay, so we know that uh, one way of looking at it is uh, this count 1 already gives me the answer when a is 1, correct? So we know that if a is 1, the output is number 1. Now the other thing we need to look at is if a is 0, we have two options. So let's look at the first option. Output is the number of zeros plus 4. 
Okay, I'll put the number of zeros plus 4. So this is the number of zeros, and I need to add it with 4. Okay, so that is where our 4-bit parallel adder comes in. Okay, so for my 4-bit adder, what I can do is, I can take this number, okay, and connect it to the inputs here. Okay, so I have 3, 2, 1, 0. So this is my first input X, and the other input Y, 3, 2, 1, 0. I can connect them to a, a value which is 4, which is 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so the sum 3, 2, 1, 0 here. This sum here, which already gives me the number of zeros. Zeros plus 4. Correct? Okay, so now I have both the answers. Now all I need to do is put it through to the other hardware that is the multiplexer. So the multiplexer over here is basically to differentiate between the two inputs. So one is the uh, J input, okay. So this J input is the four values here, and then the other one is the K input. Okay, so this so this is three down to zero, and again this is uh, uh, three down to zero. But I only have three bits here, so the three bits I connect them for bits two, one, and zero. So this is three, two, one, zero. Okay, and the output here is basically uh, you only have a 3-bit output which is your F, G, and H. Okay, and the main thing for this multiplexer is the selector which is your A. And this A is actually connected back to our A from the input. Okay, so basically what happens is if A is 0, okay, if A is 0, then I would have taken the top input J and this J is connected to the output of the adder which basically takes the number of zeros plus 4 which is this. Okay, if A is 1, I would have given the output as the number of 1s. Okay, which is basically how we have analyzed the truth table here. Okay, now let's look at the other alternative approach. The other alternative approach is very similar okay so in that basically what we have is we have again count 0 and count 1 okay so we have uh, w x y z w x y z over here so this is your count 0 and this is your count 1 okay so i'm going to draw the lines again a b c d okay so this z comes here y x and w okay so again uh, the same thing now the next stage is the adder okay so the count one output here which is your c2 c1 c0 already gives me the answer when a1 is a when a is one now the uh, other thing i need to look at is when a is zero so for a is zero uh, we already done this approach here which is number of zeros plus four now we're going to do the second approach here, which is number of ones plus two times the number of zeros. Okay, so this adder here, okay, the adder here, basically what we're going to do is the number of ones, which is here. Okay, so the number of ones will be the other input y. So the bit three will be zero. Okay, so this is y and the x. Okay, uh, x again has three inputs: three, two, one, zero. And if you look at it, I need to have two times the number of zeros. Two times the number of zeros. Okay, so this count zero gives me the number of zeros. But I want two times of this. Okay, uh, we don't have a multiplier here. But we know that a left shift by one is equivalent to multiply by two. Okay, so all I need to do is to connect the bits such that bit two now goes to bit three. Bit one goes to bit two and bit zero goes to bit one. Okay, and bit 0 is 0. So this is in fact 2 times the number of zeros. Okay, so at the output of the adder here, what I have is 2 times the number of zeros plus the number of 1. So this is the number of 1s. Okay, so this sum here that we generate at the end, 
3210 here this sum is basically the output okay so we do the same thing we pass it through the uh, multiplexer here so the multiplexer has two inputs okay j and k okay, so we connect up the multiplexers here again this is 3 down to 0 and for the uh, k input it's the same thing okay the 2 comes here the 1 comes here and the 0 comes here okay and 3 this is this is 3 down to 0 here okay and the output here is again the same thing 3 2 1 0 this is your f g and h and the selector here is your a okay which is this a over here okay so it is the same output that you will generate okay except the approach is different the first uh, diagram here shows us the approach where the uh, when a is 0 we take the number of zeros at 4 okay so that is directly using the adder here is again using the adder but we take the number of ones plus two times the number of zeros so the the trick here is to get the two times we need to shift the bits to the left by one so when we connect up to the adder we already connect them in a shifted uh, approach okay so that is uh, how you approach this question uh, like i said in the beginning it is not at all easy or straightforward okay so uh, in the exam please uh, be careful as long as you are able to see the solution uh, i mean see uh, a part to the solution okay so you have some idea how to approach it then you go and do it okay if you are uh, you've stared at it for a few minutes and you still have no idea of how to approach it or how to go about solving such a question look at the other questions first they come back to this later okay so that is your question four okay i hope it is clear now okay so now uh, let's look at our last question for the tutorial tutorial uh, question five hi in this uh, last question for this tutorial question five uh, we are basically looking back at our alu unit from our MIS processor okay and we are going to examine how the slt operation actually is implemented uh, within the alu okay so uh, this figure here basically shows us the one bit alu that uh, you are already uh, familiar with okay and we are we know that the control signal for the slt is 0 1 1 1 okay so with 0 1 1 1 what do we know okay so the 0 1 1 1 will map to the uh, four inputs here so 0 1 and the op uh, bits here for the multiplexer will be 1 1 okay so let's look at the first two bits first 0 and 1 so a invert is 0 b invert is 1 so if b invert is 1 that sort of impl uh, implies that we are going to do a subtraction operation okay that means we are basically going to do a a minus b okay so that's the first thing that we can sort of observe and the next thing we can observe is the selector to the multiplexer is 1 1 okay so 1 1 means i'm supposed to select input 3 and currently there is no input 3 okay uh, input 0 is the end gate result input 1 is the or gate result input 2 is the uh, full adder result okay so now uh, we are going to see how we can implement the slt operation uh, using uh, or extending from this one bit alu that we have here okay now let's uh, take some time to first understand the alu uh, behavior okay so uh, sorry okay so we can see that for alu operation uh, over here uh, when i say a set if less than b okay basically what i am doing is the result okay is either going to be okay all zeros and finally a one if okay if a is lesser than b correct okay if a is lesser than b then the uh, result of executing the instruction a slt b will be a one okay and 
the other answer is the value is all zeros and the last bit is also zero. This would be the case if A were to be greater than or equal to B. Okay. Now, how do we uh, uh, get this uh, result? How do we know that A is lesser than B? So, we have seen from the opcode 0111 that the first two bits here, 01, implies that I'm going to do a subtraction. Okay. So, it implies that I'm going to do a A minus B over here. Okay. And for the situation where A minus uh, A is lesser than B, that means given this scenario where A is lesser than B, if I were to do uh, A subtract B, I know that the answer is going to be a negative answer. Okay. So, I know that the answer is going to be a negative answer. Okay. So, in... Uh, in a MIPS processor, we know that we are using a two's complement system. So if my answer is negative, what does that imply? Okay, so in the 32-bit answer that I have, okay, so the answer from the A minus B. So A minus B is going to give me a 32-bit answer. Okay, bit 31 all the way down to bit 0. But I do not need to be worried about the full 32-bit uh, actual answer. All I need to know is the bit 31 result to know whether it's negative or positive, all right? Because in the tools complement system, the most significant bit represents the sign. So as long as I see that the most significant bit is one, then I know that this is the situation here, okay? So you can see that uh, when I want A uh, SLTB, when I, sorry, when I execute A SLTB and A is actually lesser than B, okay? I want the result to be one. Correct? I want the result to be 1. And we understand that the operation that is being carried out is actually a subtraction operation, A minus B. And if A is truly lesser than B, when I do A minus B, the answer is going to be negative. Okay? And for a negative answer, the most significant bit will always be 1. Correct? Because we are using the truth complement system. Okay? So now what do we observe? We observe that the result that you want from the SLT operation which is 1, is the same as the value of bit 31 after I do the subtraction operation. Okay, I hope you see the link here. Let me repeat that uh, sentence again. The result of the SLT operation is the same as the bit 31 of the result after I do the subtraction operation of A minus B. Okay, now what if A, my, A is greater than B? Okay, so again the same thing. If I'm going to do A minus uh, A, uh, A SLT B and A is in fact greater than or equal to B, then the answer is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Alright, so this is going to imply that it's a positive answer. So for a positive answer, we know again that bit 31 down to 0, okay, but bit 31, which is the most significant bit for a positive answer would be 0, correct, which is the result that I'm actually expecting to get if A is in fact greater than or equal to B, okay. So, you can see that uh, what I want, okay, in terms of the result, okay, of the SLT operation is actually the bit 31 of the result after I do the subtraction operation. Okay, so that is the first step that we must understand. Okay, now let's look at the other 31 bits here. So you can see that the other 31 bits here are all zeros. Alright, and only bit 0. Okay, so from bit 31 down to bit 1, they are all zeros. Only bit 0 is going to have a value of 1 or 0. Okay, so, and I know that this bit 0 value is actually the result of uh, the subtraction operation, but I only take the bit 31 value. Do you see the, the link here? Okay, now, how do I sort of implement this in hardware? Okay, 
So to implement this in a hardware, okay, using the ALU blocks that we have, okay. Okay, so let me redraw the ALU, just the part here. So we know that each bit here, okay, so this is bit 0, okay, bit 1, okay, all the way to bit 31. Okay, all the way to bit 31. Okay, for and for each of it, I already have the uh, current design as it is, which has a end gate. Okay, I have the uh, OR gate and I have the full adder uh, passed to a multiplexer here. Okay, so we know that the selector bits for the multiplexer here for a SLT operation, we know it is 0, 1, 1, 1. So the 1, 1 comes here, which means I'm selecting line 3. Okay, so this line 3 from the multiplexer for bit 0 should actually be holding which value? Should actually be holding the result, okay, of bit 31 over here. Okay, should be holding the result of bit 31. Okay, after I do the subtraction operation. Alright, okay, so the bit 0 of my answer should be holding the bit 31 result after I do the subtraction operation. So how do I map it back? So what I need to do is, okay, the bit 31, okay, uh, will be doing the subtraction. I mean, all the bits will be doing a subtraction operation, but I only want the result of the full adder for bit 31. Okay, and this result, okay, this result, okay, as before, the full adder result always goes to bit 2, correct? Also, always goes to bit 2 of your uh, multiplexer. And then, what I do is, this result from bit 31, I take it and I feed it back all the way to the third input of the multiplexer for the bit 0 ALU now uh, for the bit 0 ALU okay so the answer that comes out of here when my SLT operation is activated will be actually bit 31 of A minus B okay and we saw earlier that all the other bits must be 0 that means for all the other multiplexers from bit 31 down to bit 1 the input tree of the multiplexer must be a zero. Okay, only for bit zero, the input tree is actually the bit 31 of the full adder output. Okay, which is basically coming back to this bit 31 of A minus B. Okay, so all the other bits uh, will have a value of zero. Only bit zero will have the bit 31 of A minus B. Okay, so that is how we are able to uh, link back uh, the A one bit ALUs to implement the SLT operation here. Okay, so I hope uh, it is clear now, okay, given this explanation on how the A uh, SLT operation is actually implemented. Okay, so uh, that wraps up this tutorial and uh, I will see you all uh, again in the next video. Okay, thank you.